Hello and welcome to the garage. In this video, we are going to discuss some of the electrical items you should have in your electric vehicle. This will allow you to stay charged wherever you go. Let's start by looking at what comes in an electric vehicle when you buy it. Each manufacturer comes with some form of mobile connector to allow you to charge your car from a standard wall outlet in your home. Let's have a look now to see what comes in these mobile connector boxes. Each manufacturer has them. They look different, but basically they do the same thing. I have Tesla and I have a Ford Mach-E mobile connector box here. So let's now take a look to see what's inside and how you use it to charge your car. This is the mobile connector that comes with every Tesla. Let's have a look inside. Inside of the mobile connector here that comes with each Tesla is a bunch of different electrical components. Let's set that aside here. Set that aside. This is the mobile connector. The mobile connector is a small box that accepts different kinds of adapters for different kinds of circuits. The mobile connector on the other end has a plug compatible with your EV. This is a Tesla mobile connector. It allows you to plug this end into the car and this end using an adapter of some sort will allow you to make this connection here to plug into a standard wall outlet. They're interchangeable, generally depending upon the type of current you're gonna hook into. This is for 240 volts. Uh, it allows you to charge the car at twice the rate or three times the rate sometimes as the standard 120 volt AC adapter. And that allows you to modify your mobile connector to charge at 32 amps at 240 volts AC. This equates to between 28 and 32 miles for every hour when you charge your car on 240 volts AC. If I use this connector, is a standard wall connector you find in North American homes. Uh, this will allow you to charge between three and five miles for every hour of charge. It's much slower. However, this is probably more universal, this standard size 120 volt AC plug available in almost every house in North America. So once you find the proper plug to plug in with your mobile connector, you need to then have for your car. Now also comes in the Tesla pack here, it comes with an adapter. This adapter allows you to charge your car from what's called a J1772. You plug this into the car, this is compatible with your Tesla, once plugged into the car, you can use a standard level 2, 240 volt, 30 amp AC plug and plug into the. That's a standard plug available uh, in grocery stores and wherever else they have EV charging. It's not direct current, it is alternating current and it will charge your car at approximately 28 to 32 miles for every hour. So this is the electrics that come with Tesla. This is called a mobile connector, not a charger. This is the mobile connector box that came with my Ford Mach-E. Let's have a look. Comes with some instructions how to permanently mount this. But as you can see, the mobile connector is larger than the Tesla, but it does about the same thing. What also comes in the Ford pack here is varying AC connections, very much like the Tesla. This is 120 volts. 
and it's good for 12 amps. And this also plugs into the Ford here to adapt the mobile connector to the plug compatible with the Mach-E, which happens to be a J1772, like the adapter we had on the Tesla. It comes with both 120 volt plugs and 240 volt 1450 plug, just like the Tesla. And these plug in to adapt the mobile connector and you plug it into the car. So this is standard equipment that comes on most EVs. Each EV will come with a different style of mobile connector box typically, and it will then mate with the car's charging port, which in this case is the J1772. Let's discuss a few extra accessories you need to have in your electric vehicle. An electric vehicle, unlike a gas or diesel vehicle, can use electric power available just about everywhere in the planet. Yes, out in the woods there is no electricity, however, there's no gas or diesel either. However, if it is a modern dwelling where people live there, you can probably count on some form of electricity. Now, in my case, I travel all over the place. I go traveling every year several times, a lot of times up into the Northwest. I travel in the Midwest. I go everywhere. And I usually bring a litany of different types of adapters that allow me to connect my car and charge it just about everywhere that I can go. I visit friends, relatives, I visit hotels, I visit off the wall locations. And everywhere that I go, I have an adapter that allows me to charge my car. Now, you don't want to have to bring every possible adapter everywhere you go. However, it never hurts, but I really don't think that that's necessary. I really think that if you had some basic types of adapters and extension cords, I think you will do very well with your electric vehicle. So let's talk about the main one that I recommend that everyone have in addition to their mobile connector that came with their car. As you know from my other videos, there are level ones, level twos, and of course, DC fast chargers. But we're talking about AC or level one or level two charging here. DC fast chargers are everywhere, but if you do need to charge while you're at your aunt's house or you're visiting your friend, you'll need a basic amount of equipment in your car to allow you to easily connect up and grab a charge while you're visiting whomever. So let me show you one of the basic things you need to have always in your electric vehicle, and that's this. This is a standard electric extension cord. Now, depending upon what country you're in, you will have a different plug on the end. Here in North America, we have a standard 120 volt AC plug. It has an equivalent receptacle. This particular extension cord has three outputs for the one input. Now, my Tesla and my Mach-E both charge at 12 amps, and that's maximum. So you can use an extension cord about any size, but I would recommend that you use a minimum extension cord uh, depending upon how long it is. If it's 20 feet long, you could use a 16 gauge. If it's 50 feet long, I'd probably recommend that you use a 14 gauge at least for 12 amps. And if it's 50 feet or longer, choose a 12 gauge extension cord. Now I've had some of the viewers ask me about, well, maybe I need a 10 gauge. Well, a 10 gauge is fine if you're gonna go 200 feet, but a 10 gauge is a large diameter, it's heavy, it uses up a lot of room, and most of the time you can usually park your car and your mobile connector close enough to a wall outlet. You're not gonna need to go 200 feet. Now, of course, if you don't mind spending the money for a 10 gauge extension and mess around with the weight, 
that's okay. You can do that too. However, I recommend a 12 gauge, 50 foot extension cord. You can get 100, it's no problem. I just choose 50 feet because I know that I'm going to be within easily 50 feet, 60 feet of my electrical outlet that I'm going to plug into. So why do you need a 12 gauge or a 10 gauge or a, even an extension cord at all? Because sometimes you're not able to put your car close enough within the mobile connector reach to actually charge it. Sometimes you need a little extra length. Maybe if you're having to plug into the kitchen outlet at a cabin somewhere, you need to have an extension cord to get it out far enough where you can plug your car. So I recommend as a minimum a 50 foot 12 gauge extension cord. 14 gauge if you want it, that's fine, but I recommend a 12 gauge 50 foot extension cord. Your mobile connector and this extension cord are one of the best two things you can have in your electric vehicle. So let's now talk about some of the other weird adapters that I have in my car. Now I'm able to build these adapters. Most likely you're going to need to buy the adapters unless you have an electrician that wants to make them for you. These adapters I built myself. I am an electrical engineer. I know what to do to make adapters. You need to hire an electrician to build your adapters should you choose to build them. You can also buy pre-made molded adapters for any particular application. So let's talk a little bit about what I chose to do to build adapters. Now in my case, I prefer the mobile connector and using the, the jumper that goes into the Tesla mobile connector. I choose to use this 1450 plug as my standard 240 volt 50 amp plug. I chose it because it's probably the most universal now, in uh, North America here, we don't have any standards of any kind. Uh, if you look on the back of your electric dryer, you'll find there's eight different kinds of plugs uh, to plug into the dryer when typically a dryer is 30 amps, 40 amps, depending upon the dryer, and it uses all kinds of different plugs. Now, that is a wonderful source to charge your car should you need to do it. However, you're going to need to carry around six or eight different kinds of adapters, which is kind of borders on the ridiculous. Uh, you can do it, but <laughs> I don't recommend it. So what on my philosophy is here is I want to convert whatever the weirdo plug is to a plug compatible with my adapter for my mobile connector here, and that's a NEMA 1450. So when I had... I was actually able to purchase this adapter. I think I bought it from Amazon or something. Uh, it has a, a receptacle, a 1450 receptacle, and my mobile connector then would easily plug into this and allow me to mate it with my mobile connector. And the other end is, uh, I'm not even sure what it is. Uh, the label says, uh, who knows what it is. Uh, I got it uh, offhand. I'm sure the number's here someplace, but I couldn't tell you. Uh, but it actually fit my daughter's dryer plug uh, when she lived in Cary, North Carolina. I would go visit her, and I would need to plug into some 240 volts, and this was her weirdo dryer plug, as you can see. It's just kind of an oddball. I'm sure there's a NEMA number, and I... I don't have it available to me uh, here as we speak. However, I bought this pre-made adapter. It's molded. Uh, I think I bought it from Amazon or something. Uh, and I use it when I would go see my daughter. Now, this particular one here uh, is another weirdo. Uh, I bought uh, this box from the Home Depot of all places. Uh, I made this adapter myself. It has a piece of uh, number six Romex here. Uh, and it also has yet another weird connector, as you can see. 
This one actually is from my buddy up in Wyoming. I plug into his welder outlet, which he chose a dryer plug for his welder outlet, and it has a pretty screwy looking thing. So this is my Wyoming 240 volt adapter that I made. Also available, by the way, uh, in pre-made molded, should your application need it, uh, it's probably a better choice to use a pre-made molded if you can do it. In my case, I went ahead and just built this for an adaption into my buddy's welder plug. Gave me the NEMA 1450 in which I plugged my mobile connector into this and I can charge my car. Now this is yet another adapter. Uh, this is kind of a uh, oddball adapter. Uh, again, I made this. It has your standard 1450 plug here, uh, and uh, it also plugs uh, into the mobile connector here. And on the other side is yet again another weirdo plug, as you can see. And this plugs into my Ohio friend's welder outlet, and I charge my car when I go and visit him. Uh, and that converts the weirdo welder outlet here uh, to 240 volt NEMA 1450 where I plug my car mobile connector in. Now, again, uh, you can buy, I know Tesla's store has a whole pile of adapters directly like this one that fits into the mobile connector. But the chance of you using some weirdo, some of these things is slim. However, in my theory is it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. But if you don't want to spend the money and it's quite pricey to do that, um, you can figure out wherever you're going, uh, what kind of uh, outlet is there and have or purchase a, an adapter that will mate with your mobile connector. So those are the adapters that I use. Uh, like I say, there's a bunch of them, uh, but I again recommend if you know where you're gonna go, figure out what plugs are available, make the appropriate adapter or purchase the appropriate adapter and make your mobile connector mate with that. So there's one last thing that I keep in my frunk. Uh, this is kind of obscure, but again, you don't want to be in a situation where you've got to charge your car and not be able to charge your car. You're not lucky to be in a big city near a fast charger all the time. Sometimes you're out at a cabin or you're visiting a friend or who knows what. So let me show you the next item that I usually bring in. I keep in my frunk. All right, so here's the last item that I keep in my frunk. No, it's not a boa constrictor, but it might as well be. It is a 30 foot NEMA 1450 50 amp extension cord. Yeah, that's right. You, you, believe it or not, they make them. And the reason they make them are for motorhomes. Motorhomes typically use a 1450. So just like the yellow one, there is a male end 1450 and a female end. So if I have to, for example, plug this into the welder, I can now plug this one into the adapter and now I have extended the 1450 by 30 feet closer to the car and now I can use 240 volt high current to charge my car using the mobile connector versus using the 120 volt plug. So that is the last thing that I use in my car is this gigantic, super heavy, I would bet it weighs 25 pounds, a gigantic 1450, 30 foot long, 50 amp extension cord. But that's the theory. It's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So there you go. Some of you viewers wanted to know exactly what I had in my frunk. Well, now you know. That's the stuff I usually bring along when I travel. So for those of you who are just drive your EV around town, 
maybe go to work and home and those kinds of things, my minimum recommendation is to have the yellow extension cord or red or green or whatever. Remember, 50 feet, number 12 uh, extension cord as a minimum to your mobile connector in your car. That will really make the difference in getting a charge in places that you can or cannot charge by having enough length of power to get to your car to charge. That's what I do. I've been very successful. I haven't been skunked yet. I've been able to charge uh, everywhere that I go using this stuff as a minimum. Now you'll ask, well, how many times have you used this? Well, it so happens when I used uh, this particular extension, um, last time we used it was on Pikes Peak to charge the Pikes Peak Model 3. However, uh, before, I used it at my daughter's house to extend from this pre-made cord from her dryer out the door to get it close enough to plug my mobile connector in to charge the car. So there you have it. I hope this was of some help. I hope that some of you now will feel better by putting some basic things in your electric vehicle. All electric vehicles are the same, no matter what the manufacturer. If you're new to electric vehicles, you'll find that you can do things with your electric vehicle that you cannot with a fossil fuel car. One of them is, is get a charge at home without having to go anywhere and get fuel for your car. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like, click subscribe, and click the bell icon to not miss any of the videos going forward. If you'd like to buy yourself a Tesla, the referral link shown here at the bottom of the screen will get you 1,000 miles or 1,500 kilometers of free supercharging. Thank you for watching. I'll look for you again and take care.